I have this JTEC Photonics uh, diode laser module that I used to have hooked up to my low rider several years ago. And this has just been sitting in a drawer ever since. And I was thinking it would be awesome to hook it up here um, for uh, doing some marking. Uh, the Mazo now supports uh, lasers, so uh, I can hook it up and just treat it like a, another tool. So what I was thinking of doing um, is just um, making some kind of fixture to mount it that uh, will hook to a tool holder and I can just pop it in whenever I want to use it. So um, you can see it's just a, a, a small module. It's 2.4 watts. It's only good for marking really, um, not, not for engraving. But uh, I need to attach the diode and then a, a cooling fan. And then um, it has this little control box which um, I'll probably mount on the other underside of the machine somewhere or on the back somewhere. So yeah, let's see if we can uh, design a way to hook this up and get it hooked up to use. Okay, I've come up with a design in Fusion 360. I think I'm gonna do 3D printed parts for the top and the sides, and then I'm gonna use some orange acrylic for the front and back panels. And then I'm gonna turn down an aluminum shaft at the top that will fit into a 10 millimeter call it tool holder. I get the 3D printed part files imported into Chidi Slicer and sliced and let's send that to the printer. Check out my other video on the Chidi Tech Q1 Pro if you want to know more about this printer. Alright the parts are done. Alright, everything looks good, so let's move on to cutting out the acrylic pieces. I've got the file all set up in Lightburn. I'm going to cut out the holes first, and then come back and cut out the outlines. Those look like they turned out nice, so let's move on to turning down this aluminum shaft. Looks like we're at dimension, so I add a little chamfer to the end. I part it off and then flip the part around so I can clean off the face and drill and tap a hole. Okay, that looks like it's going to work. I have all the parts ready to go, so let's start assembling this. The frame's ready, so now we can install the laser. I ended up flipping around the fan as I installed it backwards here.
That looks pretty good. Let's get the rest of this hooked up so we can test it out. The controller has a, a safety key and power switch that I need to have access to. Um, so I'm thinking maybe I'll mount it right down here. Somewhere right here. And then uh, it's got a 3D printed enclosure. Or well, it's not enclosed I guess, but it's a case. Um, I think maybe I'll, I'll design a new bottom plate um, to give me some taps so I can drill it in and mount it down there. I took the dimensions off the original plate and then just added some wings to give me a place to mount it. I get that sliced and sent to the printer. I've got the new bottom plate installed on the controller, so now I need to drill some holes so we can mount this. Alright, I think that's gonna work. Alright, I've run a wire from the controller up here to the mazo. It just needs to uh, get wired to output 11 and ground uh, for the PWM signal. So, hooking it up to the mazo was pretty easy. Uh, I just went to multi head. Laser engraving cutting, and I've enabled it. And it's assigned the laser to tool uh, 111. And uh, this diode laser module, um, the max frequency is 5000, so I've put that in here. And then uh, on output 11, I've assigned it to uh, the laser PWM. There it's showing the, the main spindle. So if I change it to tool 111, you notice this box changes to laser. And I set the power by all right now it's at full power. Uh, it's between zero and one thousand is the percentage of power. Um, so now whenever I hit this uh, oops, I didn't mean that. this uh, laser button, it should fire the laser. Um, this should be two millimeters off the surface to be at the correct focal length, which is like, like one and a half inches. So let me put on my safety glasses here. Let's see if it will mark. So these are my laser glasses. This is just orange acrylic that I bought. So I actually, I want to test if, um, if I shoot the laser through it, it's actually blocking anything. So I thought I'll just use this test piece and shoot it through there and we'll see, see what it does. It, it definitely marked up the acrylic. But uh, yeah, it looks like nothing passed through it. So it must be doing something. You can see there next to it where it was marking. Nothing underneath there. So cool. So let's actually uh, see if we can put the laser in here. Well, it's marking. I accidentally um, turned the, the focus lens just a little bit, so I'm testing different uh, height offsets to see where it's the finest point. You can see there, I'm at about 12 millimeters. It's a much thinner line than what it started off as. All right, that looks pretty good. I've adjusted the focus and I've lowered it back down to about two millimeters and it looks like about the thinnest line I've got yet. So I think my focus is pretty good at like two to three millimeters right there. I've set up a 200 millimeter grid here in Lightburn. I just want to test if I'm going to be able to export files from here and if the Mazo will run them. 
So let's see what happens. I've got the file loaded here in the Mezzo, so let's give it a shot and see what happens. All right, that looks like it worked. That's good. Cool. Let's do another test. Okay, I just dropped my logo into Lightburn. Let's see if it can engrave a graphic. Uh, Mazo doesn't really seem to render it properly what it's going to be, or supposed to be. So let's give it a shot here and see what happens. Alright, well, that looks like it worked. So, cool. Since this tool is wired in, I need to come up with a place to store it. So I made this little box design that will hopefully keep some of the dust off of it whenever it's not being used. I've removed the support material and the print looks pretty good, so let's get it installed. Alright, so I think I'm gonna put up right about here. Alright, well I think that'll be a handy tool to have here on the CNC router. Um, I intend probably on using it just um, as marking some like alignment lines or positions for hold down screws, probably on MDF. Um, I don't really have a reason for using it for graphics when I have the CO2 laser that's way more efficient. Um, also, one of my main goals of doing this was understanding how the Mazo worked with uh, controlling lasers, if you know what I mean. Um, anyways, I'll put the files on my Patreon, and thanks everybody for all your support, and thanks for watching.